Hi, Chris, you're right. You're right. Yeah, no, it was a, a great performance from the players today, I thought, from start to finish. I thought we were very good in almost every area. Uh, really good afternoon for us. Yeah, you always say with these things, you can plan a, um, a game plan, how you're going to go against any team. It, it, it's irrelevant, really. It's down to the players and how they deliver that. And you, they can either make you look really good or really bad. Um, but I have to say the attitude, first and foremost, in the week when we prepared the game from the players was outstanding. Uh, I think there was a really good feeling and look about the group. Although, you know, our training numbers this week were ridiculously small. Um, but that's even more credit because they've never used that as an excuse for any negative performance. Um, and yes, we we mix things up, we we moulded things, but the the players who maybe at times were slightly out of position did an incredible job. You look at someone like Elliot Anderson and what we asked him to do today and how well he delivered that. Um, I'm really pleased for everybody. You talked about the lack of numbers for training. It was the same for the team today. Again, very few options on the bench. A couple of players are credible. Like you said, you forget to have what does it say about the togetherness if you put on a performance like that when you've got 11 players missing? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think the positive thing to look at is the 11 players that we do have available today that started the game, I think, are all very, very good players. So I've got no... I always prefer to look at what we have on, on the pitch rather than what we don't have. Because if you focus on what you don't have, you're going you're gonna to be quite sad very quickly because we're missing some outstanding players. But the ones we do have also, you have to celebrate them because... You look at uh, the contribution of well, all of our attacking players really today. It was a, a really good attacking performance. And then mixed in with a very good defensive display with players like Emil Kraft, I think delivering a, a brilliant performance. Fabi again, outstanding. And, and Dan Byrne too. So uh, th those three in particular, when you play like we did today, had to perform well. Isak, 21 to the season. Gordon, Anthony Gordon, 11, 32 between them. Some return from those two. They've done a lot for you, haven't they? Yeah, they've had to carry a big burden. Um, and when they've when they've played, especially look at them playing together and add Harvey into that, they've looked really, really good. And I thought a really good physical performance from both players. Some high-level goals, uh, very exciting for the future. I've got Damien, Luke and then Craig. Just on Alex, when you see him finishing like that, how, how good can he be? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a difficult question to answer, really, because... I'd never say to him and sort of put a, le a level that what he could be. Uh, for me, he's so exciting to work with. He's got so many different facets to his game that we can explore and try and make better. Um, first and foremost, he has the undeniable qualities that he's, he wants to score. He, he needs to score. That, that's a great characteristic for any striker to have. But he also plays for the team. He doesn't play for himself, which is rare. You know, you can see him linking play and, and doing things that the team needs, not just what he needs and um, I thought it was a great performance from him today Luke? sorry I think we've got a long way to go to get there but uh, yeah, seven oh, no what we I can't six. remember six, six thank you six um, six games to go and we'll we give our best to try and win every one Luke, in its own way, if I was to, to say to you, the job you've done this season is arguably just as impressive as, as you did last season. How would you respond to that? I never think I'm the best one to judge myself, really. I, I, I think I'll leave that to, to you. I'm sure you all do that on a regular basis. I think, I think for me, I think you just try and do the job to the best of your ability every single day. And, of course, as you go through different experiences you learn and hopefully you grow and develop and become better but um, I'm really enjoying the challenges and, and this season has been challenge after challenge thrown at us and uh, that's why I compliment not just the players but the staff as well to how we've reacted to different things 
managers say one of the hardest things about management is keeping the players who aren't involved happy. Um, so you must be really, really pleased that when you've called on these so-called squad players this season, particularly today, that they're really important. Yeah, I don't look at it like that. I look at it, we have a squad to pick from, of course, but everyone's sort of on an equal level and everyone's waiting for that opportunity to prove that they should be in a team and, and at different times they either prove that or they don't. I think today we we saw hopefully the emergence of Elliot into um, what we have all thought for a long time, that he's an outstanding player. He will be a very, very good player for us, not just short term, but long term. Um, and, and that would, could be the same could be said for other players as well. Thank you. So, uh, Craig and then David Comedo. Hi, Eddie. I know you've spoken about this a little bit in recent weeks, but every week now, Alex is either adding to his potential value or reinforcing the idea why you need to build around, around a player like him, whereas you would prefer it to be the latter rather than the former. Yeah, of course. I did a long interview uh, before the game, but you know, we're trying to build a team. We're trying to grow everything really upwards and to do that as quickly as possible and as efficiently as you can, you need to keep your best players. Otherwise, you enter a different period where you're going to transition and you have to start again. And, you know, you, your top players, the, the elite ones are so difficult to recruit, they're so difficult to find. Um, so when we when we get them, we've got to try and keep... Where is he physically now? Because one of, he's never been out of his ability it's more the ability to play games on a consistent basis. He's done that now for about five, six, seven weeks. Where is he physically? How does he maintain that? I think he's very good physically. I think he's had a difficult schedule. You think when, when the international break, he went away and played two two games for Sweden. Um, you know, we haven't got the luxury of taking him off and giving him a rest really due to the fact that, that Callum's not there and a lack of options wide as well because we'd do that and we'd play Anthony further forward. So I think he's had to go and play the minutes. But at the moment, he looks really good. Uh, of course, we're trying to manage him in between games to make sure he's there when we need him. And so far, so good. David? Um, you had just 27% possession. Um, what does that say about your game plan and how it's executed? And it's surprising that you can have that possession with Bonner. No, it doesn't surprise you. I think uh, Tot Tottenham play a certain way and uh, I'm a big admirer of how they play. I, I think they're you know, an excellent team and... I think for us to stand a chance of beating them today, we needed to be flexible tactically and we needed to try and get our game plan right. doesn't guarantee you anything. Um, I'd like to, to have had a bit more ball than that, to be honest. But I think our inability to make changes earlier probably flattened our performance off for the last half an hour. Good to get through. Good, Jordan, and then Martin. Just on Elliot, say the close where you've gone to someone like Jordan in terms of the pressure because I can't be brings down. Um, I'd say that they're different players. I wouldn't put them sort of in the same category. I think Elliot brings his unique version of sort of ball winning duels, uh, but I, I wouldn't say he's sort of a natural at that like Jolinton is. I think that's more just through his endeavour and his passion. But what he can bring is a totally different thing technically. Um, and his delivery around the box, I think we'll see that steadily improve through time. I think he will be a goal scorer for us. I think he will be a goal creator. I think we've seen that through training now for a, a long period of time. I can't speak highly enough of how he's come back from his injury. I think he's uh, in a really good place at the moment. Yeah, a big relief, I think, for him and for us. I think um, I was just saying earlier that we had a meeting a long time ago and he's promised me, said, Geffra, I won't get booked. And I, I didn't believe a word of it, to be honest. Um, because we had so many games to go and just his style of play is is what it is. I didn't think that he could control that in, in the moments that he needed to. But amazing thing that he's done for the team because he knew that if he if we lost him, we would be even more depleted. And he's, uh, as you saw today, so important to us. Martin? There's been a calmness behind the scenes during bad runs from the other committee. How important is that back in being for you and his staff? Yeah, I always say that um, the most important thing for me is not during the good times, but it's during the difficult moments, which will inevitably be there. There'll there'll always be negative periods, difficult moments, challenging uh, weeks through the season, and it's the support you get then that is the defining factor because you need stability, you need calmness, you need um, level level heads you need to make the right decisions and you need to be allowed to focus on your work and the people behind the scenes here have done all those things for me 
is there any regret during a win like that where you think, what could this season have been? And does that kind of reaffirm your, your drive to get back into the top four? Yeah, I, I don't sort of live with regret. I think, of course, you look at things and think things could have been different this season, but you have to deal with the realities and, and face them head on. And that's what we've tried to do, and it's always about the future. Yeah, uh, Dominic, Chris, Lee. Anthony Gordon really effective on the right-hand side there. How important has it been for you this season that he's been able to build a position? Yeah, I mean, you look at today's performance, we played Elliot in a slightly different role, Anthony in a slightly different role, um, Emil in a slightly different role. Dan sort of mixed mixed roles today, so a lot of players had to, and in order to get that performance right, had to sort of tweak their normal game. Um, and you need players like that. They're, as I've said so many times, they're so important, and Anthony's ability to play left and right was one of the, the things we, and, and of course, centrally, was one of the things that we really struck us when we were given the option of signing him. Absolutely. I thought the ironic thing was going to get booked after the game, which <laughs> I couldn't have believed. So we had to calm everything down. Uh, Chris? Eddie, the number of times off the ball is that you almost went man for man in terms of trying to combat that Spurs system. Did the players have to show a real bravery in the way? Yeah, I think the way that we play. We always have to show bravery. Um, we ask a lot of the players. It's never easy to do. Um, it's a key factor. And if you if you play with any doubt within that, then you're going to be in trouble. And I think, again, hallmark of the performance was brave, but brave for long periods of the game. And I thought we got our rewards for that. Just quickly, the three matches may have more flags or reference the Jolly players, and obviously Dan and, and, and Sean were central to that. Yeah, I, I wanted to step onto the pitch and applaud it, to be honest, because I can't celebrate those players enough. And I know I, I say it a lot in press conferences, but when you see behind the scenes what they give, they really do need celebrating. And brilliant gesture, brilliant flag, love the uh, visual presentation. And I know that will mean a lot to those players involved. Link, yeah. the PSG games of Benjamin are the high point of the season. Do you feel the team slowly yeah, I think the international break came at a really good time for us. After the Manchester City game, it gave us a chance, just a different environment, reset. I think since coming back, bar half an hour at Fulham, I think the performances have been better. Physically, we've looked better. And I hope that that can grow and continue from here. But as we know, with the, there's no guarantees, but I, I do think we're in a much better place than we were. Still here with admiration in, in the top six. Um, is that the maximum you can achieve this season, or can you make it interesting going into the last few? Could you guys crash the top four or top five? I think we'll just try and win every game. Um, six games to go. Let, let, let's just give our best in every one. Okay. Uh, Andy? I think it was obviously a, a really nice initiative done with the RNID. Today as well. I don't know if you know anything about it, but Dan Byrne uh, did a British Sign Language celebration uh, as part of one of the call celebrations. I just wonder what you think that means about him, especially as the Newcastle captain today, and getting his word behind the initiative in that match. Yeah, brilliant thing for Dan. I think I'm just picking things up here, what happened during the week that he went and learned a bit of sign language. So, typical Dan. He didn't just learn that and forget it, he used it at a, a really valuable time to. Um, probably say thank you to the people that he met and really encourage their support. So I think a brilliant gesture by Seller today, I have to say, um, to give their shirt sponsor um, to a, a brilliant charity, I think um, speaks a lot about them as well. Here. It's very dispersed to six more the same thing. Yeah, I don't underestimate the, the, the significance of the win today because Tottenham are an excellent team. I've watched them a lot in the build-up to the game and wherever they go, they play their style. They've they've been outstanding. They've scored goals for fun. Very difficult team to stop as we found at, at, at Tottenham earlier in the season. So it's important we learned from that game and adjusted things slightly. Uh, so that's a, a big win for us. Well, yeah, it was important we showed that the season wasn't over from our perspective. I, I always say there's no 
there's no game ever for Newcastle United that's not important. And I, I say that for a pre-season game, a friendly, it's these are Premier League games, they're, they're massive occasions and we have to show how important it is to everybody in every minute. So there was no chance we were ever going to stop trying to give our best to, to win. Yeah, I, I hope so. I think he had a bit of cramp, I believe. I don't think it's uh, an injury. Yeah, well, I think he... We, of course, you always sort of move on quite quickly and you forget how some players have accelerated really, really sharply in terms of their involvement and their performances. He's one of those that this season from minute one in pre-season, he showed a real determination to come back and have an impact. And, you know, how he's grown during the season has been brilliant to witness. And uh, again today, different position, but same Anthony. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.